If you remember last week, we ran out of time before we could have our interview with the Noctilio Leporinus expert. But we put him up in the Bob and Ray Hotel next to the music factory, and he's here today to be interviewed by our animal announcer, Fentra Sinon. Thank you, Bob. Our education director, Webley L. Webster, has prepared another program in his continuing discussion series, Wisdom of the Ages. Oh, that's good. Bob and Ray reporters Wally Ballou and Artie Skirmahorn team up to bring us a report on the fun and color at an amusement park in Massachusetts. Oh, and speaking of our native commonwealth, we're going to chat with a man who struck it rich there in the petroleum business. And at this time, we'll chat with one or two tourees as they pass by our studio on a guided tour of the music factory. Thank you, Bob. Let's have this now. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Today, the backstages are brought to you by American Airlines, who suggest you go to Palm Springs. You can have seven days and six nights at a great hotel, plus sightseeing. Only $311 based on double occupancy, including round-trip airfare. American Airlines to the good life. It's shortly after our last episode now at the backstage summer home in Skunk Haven, Long Island, as we see Mary Harry, Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, and Calvin L. Hoogevin, their next door neighbor, and Pop Beloved, who have just arrived. And we hear Mary say, Oh, come in, Calvin. Hey, and Bob. Calvin. Tell we us about what happened down in Washington. Hadn't expected to see you two back here for some time. Hi, everybody. Well, you'll never believe what happened. They called the hearings off or adjourned them anyway. They adjourned the hearings uh, for at least four weeks. Adjourned the hearings? Yeah, well, they couldn't get anybody over from the White House to talk or anything, so they just said, Well, let's cool it for a while. Pretty exciting. Oh, 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 oh excuse me. Are those what? Spanish penis there? Well, yes, they are. Why do I have a fish pool? Help yourself. Good, thank you. Well, that's certainly a surprise. I know Ralph Crusader must be pretty upset that they've postponed the hearings. He was all set to really take off after those faulty sock manufacturers. Well, yes, he was. Uh, oh, he had the stuff on him. But he's a cool, cool number. Cool cat, huh? You can't get him disturbed. No, sir, Ralph just takes it in stride like nobody's business. Well, what's the news around here, Mary? What's new? Are those uh, mixed nuts over there? Uh, yes, oh. and there's macadamians over here. Well, let me try these mixed nuts first, and I'll get to the macadamians in a little while. Well, they just moved in. <laughs> no, the big news uh, with us, Calvin. <laughs> what a sense of humor you always had, Harry. Too the, bad they never put you in the comedy. The big news with us is that Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary here, has just planned to produce a new Broadway show starring the both of us. Sounds like a flop. The both of you? You and Mary back on Broadway? That's right. What's it going to be, a comedy or... Well, we don't know. We haven't read the script yet, have we, Greg? Greg was going to leave it with us before he went back to New York today. Is somebody been into these uh, Spanish peanuts? Well, yes, just Calvin. What? Well, there, there are none left, Calvin. They're my favorite, you know. You ate all of them? Well, I didn't know. I thought you people were here. I, I didn't know. What's the play going to be called? There uh, weren't more than 40 in there. Well, there we weren't 40 Spanish peanuts. Certainly more than one fistful. Practically nothing. I don't uh, look at it that way. What's the play going to be called, well, Harry? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start out World War IV. Well, don't get in penis. a fight over Spanish penis. There are other nuts over there, mixed nuts in that bowl. Uh, who are you looking at when you say that? <laughs> I'm looking at you. No, really, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was going to cause a storm by taking a few peanuts. What's the play going to be called, uh, Harry? It's called Westchester Furioso, Pop. Or a comedy? Well, we don't know. We haven't read it yet, but it sounds like it's... Right down our alley, the kind of thing that Mary and I are so good at. Singing, dancing, that sort of thing. I hear you're going to use your hand as a model for holding a chainsaw in a big magazine ad. Then. Well, that's just a, a little fringe benefit that you get from being starred on Broadway. Have you started biting your nails? When do you start rehearsing, uh, do you know, Harry? No, I don't. Uh, Greg will let us know all about that as soon as his plans are concrete. Oh, excuse me, I see an ambulance coming up the driveway. <laughs> Ed 
And so Calvin and Pop have returned from Washington. Mary and Harry prepare to read Greg Marlowe's script for his new production, Orlando Furioso. Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear more about the ambulance and we'll hear Calvin say, What is this, 90 proof or what? In the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, Word Carr speaking. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. There's excitement at the backstage home in Skunk Haven, Long Island these days as Mary and Harry prepare their return to Broadway in the new Greg Marlowe production, Westchester Furioso. Yesterday, Calvin and Pop returned from Washington, and now it's a few minutes later as they continue discussing future plans. Are we here? Well, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you, Harry, and for you too, Mary. Yeah, I do too, uh, Mary and Harry. It certainly will be good to see you trotting the old boards again. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it too, Pop and Calvin. Have you had a chance to uh, really go through the script, or is it just in its outline form? Well, it's uh, in script form. Uh, Greg... Uh, has asked us to read it over the weekend. And... I'm going to go out in the kitchen and make some cocoa now. How many... Oh, okay, Mary. Do you like cocoa? No, I don't believe I do. How about I you? like some, uh, Mary. Uh, you, uh, Calvin? Yeah. Did you get me more of those Spanish peanuts you had a few minutes ago? Yes, uh, those redskin, you mean. Yeah. Yes, I'll bring Spanish some. Spanish kind. Yes. We're going to uh, read the play, and, of course, uh, as we read it, we'll visualize ourselves playing the leading roles. Mary, opposite me, of course, and... Me, uh, starring. Uh-huh. Hey, you wanna... you, oh, just hold over that dish, please. There. All right. There you are. There you are, Bob. Me. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, help yourself, uh, Calvin. Uh, fine. Oh, have some myself, I guess. I think I'll put some in my pocket for later. You know what's good is to mix Spanish peanuts with gum drops. Mix them up. Then take a handful of both together. It's kind of a sweet-sour-salt combination. Never thought of that. Never tried that, but it does make sense, I guess, Pop. Could be a thing to do. You got to dance in the, the new show, Harry? Well, I don't know. I haven't danced for quite a while. I don't know whether I can still do it or not. It's going to be more or less a straight play. There wouldn't be any call for dancing, would there? No, it's a musical, uh, Calvin. Oh, it is a musical? Oh, yeah. Let me try a couple of steps here. Maybe I can get back into the feel. Need a little sand on the floor to really do it. Mary will be fit to be tired if she sees that sand on the floor there. Here's your cup. Uh, who put the sand on the floor? Uh, I did, uh, Mary. I was doing my old sand soft shoe dance. Wipe it up right now. Okay. Oh, look. There goes the ambulance out of the driveway. It wasn't for us after all. <laughs> And so, as Harry and Mary go about preparations for the new production, Pop and Calvin enjoy Spanish peanuts, and the ambulance drives away. Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, say... It's for you, it's long distance from Seattle. In the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. Thank you, sir. It's uh, 25 past four now. Say, the backstage is getting into some excitement now. Oh, I look, they're, they're, never, they're never better than when they're in production for a Broadway show. Yeah. Say hello to uh, Chester Hasbrook Frisbee, who writes uh, Mary Backstage. I think you really, well, I, uh, uh, you've really touched on some timely things there already, uh, well, Chester. I, uh, I just want to remind you that you don't always have to refer to me as Chester Hasbrook Frisbee. It seems a little stilted to me, actually. Sounds as though, uh, you know, I'm somebody set apart from the average person with just a first name, middle initial, and last name. I notice a lot of our mail, uh, Chester Hasbrook Frisbee, is oh, asking uh, where is the story going to go. Oh, he has a, a stone uh, ear when I talk to him. Once uh, Mary and Harry hit the boards again, once they return to Broadway, what, what, what's going to happen? Can you give us any hint? Well, uh, Robert Brackett Elliott, let me put it this way to you. 
Uh, yes, uh, it's going to be a smash success. I think it will be the first time in the history of the backstages that they will be involved in a hit Broadway show. Well, it's going to be in the Minskoff Theater, but I guess there won't be any room for that for a while. It's going to be in the Ritz. It is. Chester Hasbrook Frisbee, thank you for coming by and talking with us. Oh, the author of oh, Mary Backstage. I mean, really. Noble what? <laughs> Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heights of Broadway. It's shortly after yesterday's episode now at the Backstage Summer Home in Skunk Haven, Long Island. Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, is about to leave. And as he goes, he's leaving the copy of the scripts of Westchester Furioso, the new play that Mary and Harry will star in. And we hear Mary say... Well, thank you very much, Greg. I I think this is going to be fun. Yes, I think uh, it'll be great for all of us, Greg, to be back on, on Broadway once again. Well, I hope so. I hope, I hope you like it. We'll read the show, and uh, we'll get back to you Goodbye, just as soon as we have an opinion. Bye, Greg. Mary, I want you to know... That Greg's uh, leaving to now, I guess, you. Calvin. Probably oh, going back to his office oh, in the oh, oh, New York. That's right. Yes, Mary. he'll be going back, and, of course, he'll be <laughs> waiting for our opinion uh, of, uh, well, of the play. Yeah, He's secretly in love with Mary, you know, Harry. Oh, yeah, yes, I, I know that, uh, Pop. <laughs> Calvin, uh, would you leave a few of those Spanish peanuts? Uh, they're not all for you, you know. <laughs> oh, Greg has such a wonderful sense of humor. Now... Well, whatever happened to those uh, Spanish peanuts? Calvin's eating them all. What's the matter? I really... You know, I can't leave here those Spanish peanuts alone. Well, of course, it is It is difficult. We where's uh, where's that, uh, that Greg going there, fellow there, uh, Mary? Well, he's going back to his he's going office. Going back to his New office York. in New York. Yes. We'll call him after we read the play and let him know. Oh, telephone. What would that be, the telephone? Telephone, uh, Harry. Telephone, Harry. Right. Let me, I think uh, the telephone is ringing, right. Harry. Why don't I answer it? Fine. Uh, hello? 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 This the backstage resident? Yes, this is Harry backstage speaking. Good. Uh, this is uh, Harry Furbish in Seattle. Seattle, Washington? I don't know if you've heard of me, but have you heard of the, the Space Needle? Well, uh, yes, that's that restaurant that... Uh, Top of that big tower, isn't it? The, one the Space that Needle isn't the restaurant. There's a restaurant on the Space on Needle. On the Needle. That uh, slowly revolves. It takes about 45 minutes to make the complete circle. Yes, I've seen pictures of it. Well, we read something here in the gossip column out here in Seattle that you backstages are going into a new play for Greg Marlowe. Boy, news travels fast, doesn't it? How do you know, uh, Pop? You can't hear what he's saying to me. And uh, we thought that maybe you could uh, bring your play out here and... Uh, Try it here in Seattle. Try out Westchester Furioso in Seattle. Try it on these apple knockers out here. Sounds like a pretty good idea, Harry. Uh, we could arrange to have a stage built up in that restaurant that you speak of, and you would slowly revolve. Be the first time you've ever done theater in the round, I guess. <laughs> Will you be quiet, Pop? You can't hear what he's saying. Who is it, Harry? It's, it's a man from Seattle, Mary. He wants us to try out our show in the top of the Space Needle as it goes around and around. How exciting. We'll we'll get back to you, Harry. Fine. Well, Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I thought we'd come out there for a minute. No. Uh, uh, when will you uh, get back to me? Well, let me have your number, and I'll call you back uh, as soon hey, as... Hey, look, i got to run. There's an ambulance coming here. <laughs> And so Mary and Harry receive an offer from Seattle to open their play, Westchester Furioso, the top of the Space Needle. Be sure and join us tomorrow when they'll make their decision, and we'll hear Greg Marlowe say... Why, of course, that would be a great idea. In the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, Word Car Speaking. And uh, the expert is with us today. Uh... Uh, sir, what is your name again, please? I don't. Doctor Edgar McClutchney. Doctor Edgar McClutchney. He's the Noctilio Leporinus expert. Uh, for those who uh, probably uh, don't have any idea what that means, I wonder could you explain it to the listener? Yes, yeah, sure. Noctilio Leporinus is a spectacular fish catching bat found in Brazil, weighing only about two and a half ounces. 
It has a wingspan of about 18 inches and its hind feet with strong curving claws are used to scoop small fish from the surface of the water. Just one fisherman bat's consumption of food is as much as 70% of its own weight. You say that uh, this uh, Noctilio Laparinus, I, I assume that there's a, a Latin phraseology, Noctilio being night. Uh, would this be a bat? Yes, it's a spectacular fish-catching bat found in Brazil. Bats, incidentally, are probably the most misunderstood of common mammals. Uh, being a bat and all, you know, there's so many misconceptions about them. Uh, could you straighten us out on a bat? A lot of people have the wrong idea about them. Well, this one is a spectacular fish-catching bat found in Brazil. It has a wing spread of about 18 inches, although it only weighs two and a half ounces. Its strong hind feet have curving claws, and they scoop small fish from the surface of the water. Is it a, a big bat? I mean, is it... No. On the contrary, it's quite small, weighing about two and one-half ounces. However, its wing spread uh, can reach as much as 18 inches. Oh, I see. It's, uh... Does it eat much at all? Fish, that is? The consumption of fish is remarkable. It's gigantic. One fisherman bat's consumption of fish is as much as 70% of its own weight. Mm. The, uh, Noctilio laparinus probably, uh, is very misunderstood. Yes, well, <clears throat> bats in general are most uh, misunderstood of common mammals. And, mammals. Uh, it has a wing spread, this bat, of approximately uh, 81 inches, did you 18 say? 18 inches. 18 inches. Yes. It swoops over the water at night, fish thus the name fish. Octilio, and scoops up the fish from the surface of the water on the rivers with its claw-like hind feet. How much would you say average... Uh, you know, as opposed to its own weight, would it eat, this uh, Noctilio leparinus, the bat? Oh, I'd say one fisherman bat's consumption of fish might be as much as 70% of its own weight. I see, and it has a wing spread of almost two ounces, you said. No, it weighs about uh, two and two and a half ounces, give or take a quarter ounce. How does it scoop up the fish? With its curved beak? There's an interesting story to that. No, its hind feet have strong curving claws, and they scoop over the water, skimming up the small fish from the surface. Dr. McClutchney... No, uh, they skim over the water, scooping up the small fish. There's a phone call for you in the control room, so why don't you run and grab it now I while you have there'll a be, chance? I imagine there'll be quite a few calls from interested people. Thank you very much. Bats I know, are uh, quite misunderstood. I know. We've been listening to Dr. McClutchney, world-renowned, uh, famous expert on the Noctilio uh, leporinus. <laughs> Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. It's several days after our last episode now. The offer from the theater in Seattle has been accepted by Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, and rehearsals have already begun at a theater in New York, preparatory to their leaving for the West Coast. Now outside the rehearsal hall, we see Greg, Mary, Harry, and Calvin, together with Pop Beloved's stage doorman, as they discuss... Yes, I made the final arrangements with the chap in Seattle, and uh, we're going to open there in the Space Needle restaurant. Well... On the 1st of April. All very exciting, April, Greg. Isn't that kind of... Risky? Why, what do you mean, uh, Calvin? What's the home status? About that, I think. Oh, well, we don't go by those those old uh, superstitions. Well, because of the rush of time, I've had the chorus... Well, let's step inside the theater here at the rehearsal hall, and uh, I've had the chorus working since 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, good. This is All the right. finale of the first act. I have been making, uh, making activity. Oh, we certainly enjoyed reading the script of the play, Greg. It's Fire Girl. Looks like Hi, it's, uh, just the thing for us. When will you be leaving for uh, Seattle, Greg? Do you know? I think we'll go out the 29th of March. That won't give us much time to get used to the theater out there. Well, we'll be there. It only takes you six hours to get out there, you know. All right. But I mean, we'll be opening a couple of days later. We. That's all you need. Real food. Fire Girl. You know, that chorus is doing pretty good for only having been uh, rehearsing for a few hours now. 
Well, they're seen tr- uh, seasoned troopers, too. Uh, huh? Seasoned troopers. Oh, are they? Yes. Yeah. Hiya, girl. Mary, do you think you're going to be able to carry the musical numbers? I don't know as I can dance like I used to. Watching those young girls out there now, I'm getting a little frightened. Take a break, girl. I'll do that, Pop. Oh, okay. Take a break, girls. You mean you don't... I'm the producer of this show. And you don't you forget it. You don't know it, whether you'll be able to sing the songs, Mary, to dance the numbers? Is that what you're afraid of? It's, uh... What did you say? I say you're afraid of singing the numbers, dancing the numbers. Are you talking to me? Oh, Mary, I'm talking oh, to Oh, uh, no. No, I, I just don't think I can dance like I used to. Hey, who's that coming into the back of the theater? He certainly looks familiar to me. Yes, he does to me, too. Who? It's... It's Harry Backstage, Jr. Harry Backstage, Jr.? Your son, Mary, home from college. Home from college? And so, as rehearsals go on, Harry Backstage, Jr. returns to his parents' life. Will this affect their trip to Seattle and the opening of Westchester Furioso, their new play? Be sure and join us tomorrow and we'll hear Mary say, You mean your father has to go and talk to the dean? That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. We may respectfully call your attention to the next feature of today's Music Factory, which will be uh, coming up after we have a little more music. Wally Webster's Wisdom of the Ages. Yes, everybody's here, and we're all prepared to present, I think, a very interesting tidbit of programming. We've had had some good reaction to this. A lot of mail from people uh, saying that they really, uh, they really dig what you're doing with this wisdom, these great thoughts. Yes, sir. So, uh, so they can call their friends now and. Get ready. We'll oh, be... please don't use the phone here. If you want to use the telephone, go out and use the pay telephone. I've had a lot of complaints about that. All right. We'll hear the wisdom of the ages right after this. Oh. Young man, are you enjoying uh, Richie Havens? Yeah, Richie's incredible. He sings it like it is. He, he sings it as it is. <laughs> Why they hire a square like you to do a Richie Havens commercial? <laughs> If you'd like to enjoy Richie Havens both in concert and with new studio sounds, get his new two-record Verb Forecast album, Richard P. Havens, 1983. He sings it as it is. You square. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Today. Oh, stuck. It's stuck. Now they're broken. Sorry. Go ahead. Today, Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin are preparing to leave New York for their trip to the West Coast and the opening of Westchester Furioso. And at the backstage summer home in Skunk Haven, we hear Mary say, Anybody want some cocoa? I just made a big pot. No, I don't believe so. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, now I can hear you better, Mary. Anybody would like a pitcher full of Manhattans? Hey. What are you talking about? Hey, no, baby. baby. What are you talking about? Well, I just feel so giddy thinking that we'll be leaving for Seattle in a few days. On Monday, I think, our tickets uh, call for us to leave. And we're going by train, Calvin. Oh, really? Oh, really? You're not flying? No. We thought it might be nice to take a leisurely trip by train to the coast. Yes, we thought it would be nice to get to see the country, and also it would give us an opportunity to learn our lines. So by, by the time we get to Seattle, we'll be able to enjoy salmon and won't have to stay home and read our lines. Some of them don't enjoy what crabs, too. Salmon. Those what? Dungeness crabs. Don't they get those out that way? Oh, they're so delicious. Yes, and those, uh, I'm trying to think, those gooey, gooey ducks. Chocolate-covered peanuts? 
They have gooey ducks in Seattle. What is that exactly? I've heard, it's some kind of a seafood, isn't it? It's a clam. You can't believe the size of it. It's about the uh, four-pound clam. Wow. Makes me sick to think of it. Well... I don't think we'll bother with the gooey ducks while we're there. But we will be able to see some of the countryside along the way and learn our lines, as, as you say. I'll bet a lot of the country has changed since we last traveled, Mary. Oh, yes, the buffalo have been almost wiped out, you know, the bison. I know they have. <laughs> well, let's get to the cliffhanger because Mary, this episode going to is work. nearly over. Mary, are you going to take this dining room table with you? No, we're not taking any furniture with us, Calvin. We won't be there for forever, what you know. What in the world would we take the dining room table with us for? Well, it's a nice one, and, uh, you know, you can seat the six of us around there comfortably. Well, you can go to a restaurant while we're in Seattle. What are you going over in the corner for, Pop? Are you going to dance a little bit? Hey, I might just do that. Let's all watch Pop dance. Give me a handful of that sand there. Let me spread it around the linoleum. I'll go get the vacuum so we can clean up after you through there. Fax pages! Telegram! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A telegram? Telegram! Good news or bad? I don't know. You'll have to read it yourself. I can't make head or tail of it. Well, let me see. Hate to get telegrams. Well, don't tear this. it into shreds. Just read it. Mary, look at this. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> So on the eve of their departure for Seattle, a telegram arrives and seems to stir the concern of Mary and Harry. Be sure and join us on Monday when we'll hear Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, say, Oh, my. In the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, Word Carr speaking. Time now for Wisdom of the Ages, an educational feature of the Bob and Ray Stuff, moderated by Webley Webster. Wisdom of the Ages, copyrighted, presents a group of noted scholars discussing the stirring words of the world's great men. And now, here's Mr. Webster. Thank you. Now I'd like you to meet our panel, who's profundity, acumen, and persecutor, is really something. First, starts Van der Heuvel, editor of Ennui, the famous magazine for bored intellectuals. Yes, how do you do? Thank you. And uh, next, Diedre McInerney, poetess, whose book of verse, called uh, Verse to Live By, is the top worst seller. No, no, it's the top verse seller, uh, Mr. Webster. I'm sorry. Uh, the word was smudged here on my script. Last, we have Oren Gruber, Dean of Chicks, at the Tumbledon College of Poultry. By way of greeting, I'd like to quote the words of uh, TV announcer Rex Marshall, who says, Hello, folks. Well put, Orrin. But now to get the old ball rolling, as we say, I'd like to use the words of the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tse, who said, One foot cannot stand on two boats. Yes, very true. And uh, wasn't it uh, Karl Marx who said, I should have been born a millionaire, and believe me, next time I'll know better? Yes, yes. And I'll always remember Yul Brynner's words. A hair in the head is worth two or more in a brush. Many meanings are attributed to Charles Dickens' famous words. Man without smiling face should not open a store. If I may add to the flow of wisdom here, I believe it was the old Greek philosopher Aristotle Onassis who said, there's a many a true word spoken through false teeth. What do you suppose the poet Shelley Berman meant with his phrase, one foot cannot stand on two boats? I don't really know, but I think the late Guillermo Shakespeare said a mouthful when he wrote, I should have been born a millionaire. And believe me, next time I will know better. The poet Milton Cross showed a profound knowledge of economics when he wrote early to bed and early to rise till you get enough loot to do otherwise. I believe it was Oliver Wendell Berra. No, I mean, Oliver Wendell Holmes won me over when he penned the phrase, there's many a true word spoken through false teeth with one foot in two boats. Elizabeth Barrett Browning waxed poetic when she wrote, It's better to be a nice guy in your own hometown than be a real sweetheart in somebody else's joint. And wasn't it the other English guy, uh, Walt Widmark, who said, 
A hair in the head is worth two or more in a radiator brush. Let's not forget poor old Benjamin Franklin's words. Early to bed, early to wa- uh, rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and rise. I don't believe Benjamin wise, Franklin wise. ever said that. Ben that Franklin, uh, uh, he yes. said not rise, he said wise. Wise, yes, uh, early to bed uh, or otherwise. Well, that may All be. All right, my friends, I think, though, that uh, the lady with red the hand is, there. the red hand is stopped on the clock. But anyway, we've got to go now. Say so long for wisdom of the ages. This is Wesley L. Webster saying, in the words of Jerome Crawford Jerome, Whoever the heck he was, he said, leave takings of but wasted sadness. Let me pass out quietly. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights, and their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Today, Mary, Harry, Pop, Calvin, and Greg Marlowe are all preparing to leave the backstage summer home in Skunk Haven, Long Island, for the long trek to Seattle, Washington, and the opening of Greg's new play, Westchester Furioso. Last minute, pieces of business are being done at the backstage home now as we see all of our friends packing and getting ready to leave for the train. I just uh, want to remind you all that, you know, it rains a lot in Seattle, so you better bring your raincoat. That's right. It can be pretty gloomy out there sometimes. Yeah, it gets drizzly. You know, it doesn't pour. It just drizzles, like, all the time. You think I'll need my galoshes, Calvin? I'd recommend you take them, sure. Mary, would you put the galoshes in, or is there room? Oh, well, I think there's room for them. I'd better cover them. I'll put them in my briefcase. No, I'll just cover them with newspaper so they won't rub off on your shirts. You see. You got yeah. plenty of Spanish peanuts to eat on the train, Barry. You know how handy those things will we'll, be. We'll take some. Don't need to worry about that. It's been a long time since we've gone across the country on a train, you know. Oh, it certainly has, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be rather fun to spend two or three days on the train, watching the countryside, seeing various cities that we've come to know, cities we've played at. And to me, it's just time. reliving my geography lessons where I was a boy in school. We'll be going out to Montana and Colorado and Utah and up in that way, you know. They still change in Chicago, do you know? I don't know. I don't think we have to get off the train, uh, Calvin. Do you know, Greg? Uh, no, you don't have to change no. to Chicago anymore. You, you stay on the stay same on. train. Yes. Clear through, right to the Seattle. Calvin, I think that's my umbrella you're packing in your I bag. I think there. you're wrong, buddy. That's my umbrella. The initials right on it. I knew it was mine because instead of the little string that you... Wait a minute. To wrap around it and no, this is for this, it together. This was given to me on my birthday by the mother of me. I don't see any initials on there. The, the elastic band There's is no what initials I, on this one. The one at home has my initials that on That one there is my umbrella. You're crazy. This is dark. Oh, yeah? Right. So, can I have my umbrella? I'm sorry. I guess I won't need it that much anyway. Pop, I, I never realized. Pop, I, I never saw you get so physical. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I'm jumpy, Barry. That's all. It's the prospect of a long trip. I the more think. I think about it, why do we need you out in Seattle? They'll have a doorman, of course, at the theater we'll be appearing at. I don't think you ought to go. What's that? I said I don't think you ought to go. Oh, yeah? Right. <laughs> Yeah. Stop it now. Why is it we can't conduct ourselves like ladies and gentlemen? This is ridiculous. Stop this petty fighting, Calvin and Pop. We're all going. Well, We've listen, got tickets. We can't have this across the country. Now, no, we have to make up our minds to that can. right now. All right, I'm sorry, Calvin. All right, Pop, watch it from now on. Right, I will. I think it's time to leave, folks. Big stiff. <laughs> And so our friends prepare to leave Skunk Haven and head for New York City and the train which will take them west. Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear Mary say, Put them up, Pop. That's in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, Word Car Speaking. Me and our correspondents, Wally Ballou and Artie Scrimahorn, to the boardwalk 
at the Abajona Park up in Winchester, Massachusetts. Come in, please, Wally Ballou. Wally Ballou here on the boardwalk. A beautiful day and a big crowd gathered at Abajona Park to enjoy the fun, the sights, the sounds, the smells of uh, summertime vacation land. Uh, my broadcasting partner, Artie Skirmahorn, is uh, equipped with a mobile unit some few hundred feet away from me, I would say. I can't see him at the moment from his vantage point. I might just call him in and be sure he's there, and then don't take it away, Artie. I'm keeping it here. Just say if you're there or not, so I know whether you're ready to come in when I call you. This is Artie Skirmahorn. Okay, I'm going to take fine, it for Artie. just a little uh, while, Wally. Wait a minute. No, I didn't just, give it up. Uh, just for a little while. Artie, Hunt don't cut the microphone. Uh, Would you I had it first, Artie. We'll take it back, Wally. This is is Wally Ballou standing by the putt putt cars here at Abajona Park. And that's about the color here. While I move on to something else, Artie is standing by now at his vantage point by the name guessing game. So come in, please, Artie Skirmahorn. Nice. This is Artie Skirmahorn here. The idea of the game is the forward guesser. Artie Skirmahorn here. 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 Artie
idling in the backyard with an old snake I had, and uh, I snaked down to the ground, kind of curved it around a little bit, and next thing you know, up it flowed. Not uh, black gold, but it was absolutely beautifully refined and a very high octane. Ready for use. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, certainly so, lucky. Uh, I don't think that's found very often. So I put up uh, three pumps there, and I uh, call, uh, called it Famous Name Brand. And I said uh, underneath it in small lettering that I wish I could name the manufacturer of this uh, brand. Uh-huh. But I'd be afraid to. You well, know, what you have done, sir, you have put that snake... Uh, you have bored into somebody's uh, oil line. Where? Yes. And uh, you are illegally supplying people with uh, oil which belongs uh, to someone else, you see. I think it's an airplane type of gasoline. It's very high octane. I know some of the fellows, uh, when they put on their brake to turn in the driveway, go about three more blocks. Uh, well, I don't <laughs> want to have any more part of this. And whoever lined this interview up, please get him back to where he came from. That's right. I'm heading right back to where. Where? You know it. So long. <laughs> Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Mary, Harry, pop beloved stage doorman, Calvin Hoogevin, their next door neighbor, and producer Greg Marlowe, secretly in love with Mary, are leaving now for Seattle, Washington, and the opening of Greg's new play, Westchester Furioso, and at New York's famous Grand Central Station. Our friends are arriving one by one and preparing to board the train west as we hear that. Look, uh, everybody follow me over here by the OTV windows. I'll uh, give you your tickets and your assignment. You have the roster there, uh, Greg, of yes, all I do, uh, Pop. Oh, how exciting. I haven't heard in Grand Central in years and years. Well, I've got my Gladstone here with me. All right. Harry, you're yes, going to be in uh, uh, the Pullman car, Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. Let me just make a note of that because I'm not very good at my memory. It fails me at times. Car 418. 418. Pullman car 418. Great. Mary, uh, shall we go? And Mary we'll, we'll will be in, in car 206, Pullman, Martha, Washington. And, uh, Greg? Apartment C, Mary. Greg, I and, think you uh, made I'll a be, uh, there. Uh, no, I'm on the same... Same car, 206, apartment F. Uh, Mary will be and, uh, in Pullman car, Martha Washington. And I will be, and you're in the Ben Franklin. Incidentally, I think that will be two cars ahead of ours. I see, Greg. Uh, now, Pop, that's all you could get, I suppose. This is the last minute thing I could make. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pop, Mary, I'll see you then. I, right, I hope the Ben Franklin is further right. out of the Wait time. a minute, Pop. You're in, uh, uh, where's Pop? Right here, right here, Barry. No, I mean, where is he riding? Oh, he's in, uh... You got the in... tickets there, uh, Greg? Uh, he's coach. Pop, you're in car 141, and you take a seat. They're rush seats. And Calvin, it's a rush seat for you, too. So the quicker you get aboard... Be uh, Calvin and I better just make a run for it now and get whatever we can. Well, we, uh, we ride... Let me see if I got this right, you cheap skate. We're on full. You guys are right in the all first can get, I imagine, Calvin, uh, the last minute you can't get uh, reservations. Yeah. All aboard! All the calling all aboard. Have you got your bag there, Calvin? Yeah, I will, sir. We'll see you, Greg, Barry, Harry. We'll uh, join oh, we'll you sometime. Oh, we'll see you in the dining car, I'm sure. Oh, yes. I'll uh, come two cars forward and uh, get with you, Barry, there after we get aboard. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, uh, it's pulling out now. Oh, my. I haven't... Hurry up, Barry. That's uh, standing by the gate back there. He's uh, he's a friend of the conductor. He likes to sing. Sing. Goodbye, goodbye, oh, Greg, that's a nice touch. Did you arrange that. Yes, isn't that lovely? Goodbye, Just listen. Goodbye, oh, I hope the train waits for us. their stream, steam train at Grand Central Station and start their long trip westward. You want to join us for each exciting moment of our future episodes 
and particularly tomorrow, when we'll hear Mary say, Oh, Gray, how nice to meet you here in the dining car. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word car speaking. The McBeebe twins, Claude and Clyde. Oh, hi, uh, hi, 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 Yes, we're certainly pleased with it. Let me introduce you properly because some people may not have uh, not remember your great band days. Those uh, those were some some years back. But Claude and Clyde McBeebe were one of the big names in the big band era. They've they've covered uh, the gamut of music from jazz to swing and right through uh, almost into rock. I don't think they, you ever got that far, did you? We never we ever into got into rock too much. much. Uh, 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 Bob Ray, Ray. Uh, just because, because uh, we, we were, were more on the square side. Square side. We, were we were really cute. Really cubes. Yes, well, a lot of people thought so too, but you did do pretty good. In the summertime, you had... Uh, you had your ice cream wagon business. That's right. That's right. Last and summer, last summer, you remember that, that one, week one week in August? On the special, uh, we had that yeah, cherry custard, custard, custard with, uh, with a coconut, coconut, coconut on the top. On the top. Yeah. That, that was, big was a big sour. But, uh, but uh, remember, 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 remember this. this. You can you have can all the specials you want, but put your money on vanilla ice cream. Vanilla. You can't imagine how much vanilla ice cream you sell in one summer. I mean, it's a sight. Well, wow. Well, I know. It's always been a favorite of mine, and uh, it seems to be a year-in, year-out favorite of most anybody. I don't know what the figures are, whether vanilla is the biggest seller of any of the ice creams, but it certainly has got to be uh, among the top. You know what we you just, just bought? An oil tanker. An oil tanker? <laughs> an oil tanker? <laughs> what did you buy an oil tanker for? I don't know. 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 Well, we, we have a tie-up of the flushing rain. Okay. We'll get back to the McDeebies, uh, if we can, a little bit uh, after we do a little more business here. I know Beth Martell is waiting to <laughs> tell us about uh, our, hey. our stars today. Hey. We like, we Beth, like Martell. Beth Martell. Want to hear my impersonation of her? Ours? Or ours impersonation? Ours impersonation of Aries. Libra. Capricorn. Capricorn. Pisces. Aquarius. Pisces. All right, Claude and Clyde, the BB twins. I know you remember the backstages. We go to we we have returned them to radio. You know. Oh, you know. Well, you know. We, we want to point out to you that since you started here on radio, New York, New York, we've been regular listeners, and we let you in the car at home. We each have our own speaker. You, what do you mean, stereo radio? Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. yes. But you but follow us on the broadcast, broadcast more, normally. more normally. So we, so uh, we uh, pick you up pick on the front seat. Because one in the front seat, one in the back seat. Just the other day, the both of us were in the back seat. Back seat. Who, was Who was driving? Who was driving? We don't know. No, we don't know. Okay. It was the same day that we bought the oil tanker. I just wanted to ask a quick question of the of the author of uh, Very Backstage, uh, Chester Hasbrook Frisbee. Chester Hasbrook Frisbee, the fact that you're moving the locale of the story to Seattle, does that mean that you have a particular knowledge of that area of the country? Have you, have you picked that as a place for them to open the show for a reason? Well, Robert Brockett Elliott and uh, Raymond Walter Goulding. You, you don't need to call us yes, by I, our full names. I, uh, I spent a good deal of time in our great Northwest. You did? Yes. So that's they why. say it's beautiful out yes, there. Yes, it is. Right? Across, across the Bay to Vancouver. Yes, that's true. Hart Link, Hart Link Letters' hometown, I believe, isn't it? I have no idea. No idea at all. Okay, Chester Hasbrook Frisbee, author of... Uh, <laughs> Robert Brockett Elliott and Mary Raymond Raymond Walter Gould. <laughs> backstage. <laughs> Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Aboard the crack hummingbird express heading westward, Mary, Harry, Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, Pop, beloved stage doorman, and Calvin L. Hoogevin are getting together in Greg Marlowe's compartment of the Pullman car Martha Washington as they discuss plans for the days ahead aboard the train. Well, I hope you people uh, in the compartments had a nice, comfortable sleep last night. 
I, uh, I can only speak for myself, of course, by saying that I, uh, I didn't. Not too easy to uh, sit up in a coach seat all day. Too bad. Uh, you don't think, Greg, that we could get, uh, you know, some accommodations for uh, these two in the, in the compartment? Yes, and Greg, it would be nice so. if I could get a compartment here in the Martha Washington instead of having mine two cars back in the Ben Franklin. I'll look into that, uh, Harry. I, I tried this morning, but the conductor said uh, he couldn't do anything about it. Sure. They were, they were booked until we are west of Chicago. Have you found the dining car yet, how far away that is? I'm beginning to get hungry. Yes. Well, we've only been aboard it, for five it's, minutes. It's wow. four cars forward. Four forward. Yes. What route are they going to take? You know, are we going to... Yes, we're going to uh, go up through uh, to Buffalo morning and then through Cleveland uh -huh. and uh, into Toledo and up into Chicago. Oh, that'll be along the Great Lakes. Uh, we'll along. get a good good view of the lake here. Hey, look at that diesel passing. How did you happen to pick a train with a steam engine, uh, Greg? Did you know that... I have no choice. I take what they put on these trains. Well, of course. But <laughs> what was on that train way. heading east anyway? I didn't, uh, I couldn't tell. It looked like tank cars to me. What would they be uh, sending in tanks? I don't know. Could be some kind of... It had of a skull and cross, a crossbone on each of those. Well, then it was poison. Had to be poison of some kind. They still put that on poison things? Well, oh, I yes, imagine yes. so. Well, anybody for the, uh, the yes, food? Yes, uh, I'd, uh, I'd be ready. No, Harry, I, I was thinking of maybe Mary and I go down and have early dinner, and then uh, you and Pop and Calvin could eat later. Well, yes, we, we could we could do that, I suppose. I could be studying the play while you're Harry, having... Harry, let me, yes, let, me, let me talk to you. Yeah. You, Are you bananas or something? Why? Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, why don't you go and eat with those two? Don't you know what he's trying to do? Well, Greg suggested that he and Mary eat first, and then we'll three of us eat later. Well, I'm hungry, right. but could I join you, uh, Greg? No, Larry? no, absolutely not. Well, uh, go ahead then, and uh, we'll uh, have our dinner later. I'll Look, study the play. Uh, let it's... me put it this way. When we come back, that will be a cue for you to leave and go to the dining car. Good idea, Greg. Good idea. Oh, brother. Wow. Oh, brother. <laughs> And so the long trip westward begins. Westward to Seattle, where Mary and Harry will open in Greg Marlowe's play, Westchester Furioso. Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear Greg Marlowe say... Ah, Cleveland, I think I'll go out and get a breath of fresh air here. That's in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, Word Car Speaking. You have a very busy schedule, McBeebies, and I want to thank you tremendously. For well, we have to leave a double park, park down here park on Broadway. Well, that's uh, really, uh, really uh, looking, uh, for uh, looking for trouble. Looking for trouble. So, uh, we really uh, want to get going. But, but uh, we, we would, uh, would uh, uh, like, uh, like to take this, this time, this time, this time this opportunity to uh, wish you the best of luck here in your program. And we think it'll be a smash success. If and when we make another record, we know that you'll be pleased to give it a spin. When was, what was your last record? Do you remember? I've forgotten. My beer, Mr. Shane. Mr. Shane. Huh? By Mayor Mr. Shane. Yes, yes. Do you remember that? Remember that? Yeah, I do. I remember the Andrews sisters, but I don't remember your record of that. We, we did, did it uh, about, about six months, months, six after, months the after the Andrews sisters. Andrews sisters. So our record was more or less lost in the... As 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 the... In the shuffle, huh? Yeah. Claude and Claude... Timing was very poor. Timing was poor out of that. Well, maybe you had a bad management at the time. You going out with the McBeebe twins band again this spring? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. This spring, we're going to do a little lawn work in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. We work recently, we work recently and, we, and, and uh, we both have a, have a green thumb. thumb. I noticed. Well, thanks for coming by today. And uh, say hello to Ron Harper, our engineer. You remember him? I certainly and do. And our producer, and I know Michael he White. I know he, we, do, we both do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You like our new suit? You like our new suit? Claude and Clyde, the McBeebe twins, now leaving our Bob and Ray Radio New York studio. We have to double pack. I know, on Broadway. Uh, well, thanks. That's Wilbur Connor. Well, congratulations. The uh, young square to work for us. Congratulations, uh, Wilbur, for not pitching it through the window today. <laughs> oh. oh, two windows was, uh, was plenty. 
Hey, I think there's a uh, uh, plum cake in there for you from Doris Day. Hey, that looks, uh, it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Doris always always remembers us. It's awfully nice of her. In fact, I know it's, uh, it's fruit cake. I think she baked it herself. Yeah. Right? I took the ones she sent to Peter Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> it's the young square that works for us, uh, Wilbur Connolly. Now this, uh, Ray, is Eugene Claflin, and last week at the age of 58, he began a whole new career as a track star. Isn't that right, Eugene? That's right, Fifth. I'll be 59 on the 23rd day of next month. Now I want to ask you one question. Can you stay over until tomorrow's program? It appears there isn't going to be time to go into your highly interesting story on tonight's broadcast. Where will I stay, Biff? We'll put you up at the uh, Bob and Ray Hotel. Oh. They'll put you up at the Bob and Ray Hotel. Oh, all right. You'll be treated royally. You'll come back tomorrow. I'll talk to you. We'll have the interview. Well, uh, will you buy me dinner? Oh, yeah. We'll, 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 all right. Well, then I'll be, we'll I'll, that. I'll be glad to come back tomorrow. Will you? Okay. Then we'll hear from Biff Burns and his guest tomorrow. Very sorry about time running out today.